Somebody out here at Columbia today. Somebody let us know. Can you hear me now? Can you see me now? We're here at Columbia, California for a casual <laughs> gathering of Luscombs today. And I want to show you the flight line. And we've got a couple of very special airplanes here at the end of the flight line worth checking out. So I'm going to turn this thing around. Somebody let me know if you can see or hear this signal. I'm not seeing the chat there just yet. We've got a great turnout of aircraft here at Columbia this year. So I'm going to show you the flight line. All right, five by five, and the and the uh, picture quality is okay, not too skippy. Good. Okay, here we go. Flipping this thing around. Uh, let me fix that camera a little bit there. Let me do that again. There we go. That's better. All right, welcome to Columbia. Here's our grass strip here at Columbia. One of the very few grass strips at a public use airport in California. They just mowed it for us yesterday and it's in beautiful shape and it's plenty plenty long so here we go let's start off right here with this beautiful thing just showed up this is a uh, doug johnson right out of grass valley our hometown airport and his beautiful 8a and he's been winning awards down here for for a long time here it looks like he's on the phone but look at that polish this is the neat thing about aluskum is the way that they polish up so nicely so this is his metal wing, Luscom 8A. Poland, hey, Australia, wow, Greenwich, London. And Doug's paid a lot of attention to um, gap sealing this aircraft and making it extremely aerodynamically clean for a Luscom. Watching from Spruce Creek flying. Yeah, that's up there in Idaho, right? You guys are up there today doing that? Is that a work party up there in Idaho? Just a beautiful job. He's got his aluminum wheel pants on there and he's paid a lot of attention, watch that prop, to little things like gap seals, little fairings down here. Those kind of little aerodynamic details really pay off. Sealed that up. Nobody can catch you, Doug, on this thing. How was the ride over today? So we've had a few more aircraft uh, here besides Luscombs. Everybody's just eager to get out of the house and uh, the weather has just been perfect here today. <laughs> don't swear on the YouTubes. Hey, you don't have to own that uh, Aviat Monocoupe, do you? That's not you? Okay, no, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the non-electric 8E. Okay. He and I are Good. All right, we'll go up and check it out. Thanks. So there's your Aronka Champ with the big wheels. Welcome to live on the Blanco Lirio channel. <laughs> Are you live? Yeah, we're live now. I get to tune in. <laughs> Quick, go back to camp and turn your phone on. See what's going on around here. <laughs> Champ with the big wheels. Hey, hey morning. This is a yeah, it's a. <laughs> he brought his Luskum T-shirt for his. <laughs> With his champ. I got a Ferrari hat, a Luskin shirt, and a champ. <laughs> That's good. Scandinavia is checking in. Temecula, Arkansas. We got a avid flyer here. Fly it like you stole it. We got a Swift here. We'll get to some Luskums, I, I promise here. We got lots of Luskums here to show you. Hey, here comes some. Oh, watch this. Now watch, watch that climb. <laughs> That's a little more better than your average Luscombe, right? That's a 150 horse, I believe, Luscombe. So that's a, what a Luscombe with a big engine climbs out like. So we got, uh, here's a Globe Swift, the poor man's P-51, two seat side-by-side, -side, super cool tail dragger. Dustin, hang on, don't go away. And some of the cool things about the Swift is it comes with slats already built into the aircraft retractable tail dragger even the tail wheel retracts on these and this has got the stock engine the 0300 and does this fellow work with you too dustin no no he's a medevac pilot out of reno medevac pilot out of reno with the globe swift an 0300 now, i don't know what this 
Husky's doing here. He's not supposed to be here, but he's he here anyways. And here he is, Dustin. Say hi, Dustin. <laughs> and uh, what did you bring? Uh, you brought you, of course, your 120. Yep, but then we got our three of us, three uh, Tatchby local three. tail dragger pilots. That's right. And so what did you bring? I brought the other 120. The other 120. And Milo, you brought the? I've got the Taylor Craft. The F-19. F-19, yeah. One, one of the newest airplanes out here. It is, yep. <laughs> with what engine do you have, did that one come with? An O-200. Uh-huh. So that makes a good performing Taylor Craft with the O-200. Oh, yeah. It's great. Really short takeoff. Now, do all three of you work at the same location? We're all Mojave Air and Space Corps. We're for various... Uh, Aviation Endeavors. Aviation uh -huh. Endeavors. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Good way to say them. Uh, so. Myla, can you tell us a little bit about, or do you want to... Oh, well, I work for a Strata Launch. Um, so we just flew. It was the second flight for the aircraft. And we're hoping to drop hypersonic vehicles from our very large airplane. Wow. And it's got a huge payload capacity, I understand. And what, what are you using for engines on that thing? Uh, same as the 747. And how many of them? Six. Oh, no wonder you can lift so much. What an amazing... Is that a Rutan-inspired design? It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great. Wow. And you're working uh, flight controls? Yes. Uh-huh. And you're working the part, the technical bit about m moving the flight controls, not necessarily the aerodynamics, but the... Yeah, that's correct. And are, is that all electro-hydraulic these days, or electric, or fly-by-wire, or...? It's, uh, it was originally built with cables and... Originally with cables and pulleys? Cables and pulleys and all that, and we've been making mods, so we're still in the modification process. Wow, that sounds like a kind of a Rutan thing. Start with the basics, oh, right, basics. Dustin? Yeah. Yeah, we work for Virgin Galactic, so Richard Branson's uh, commercial space uh, tourism great. experience type company. Great, great. And uh, Ship 2, White Knight 2, and all that kind of good stuff. All right, and they got that all sorted out for now and moving ahead with... Good program and lots of good things to come. Excellent. And the neat thing about Dustin and his 120 is he's one of the most for formidable. <laughs> he's the most proficient backcountry guy I've ever flown with so far in that 120. He's already landing. That's no flaps, right? No flaps. Okay. Cessna 120, shorter than I am in the Husky. Of course, I'm kind of new to the Husky, but still. I got a few hours on here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't it credit yourself where you're due. <laughs> so, so if you get a chance on social media, check out what Dustin's doing. Dustin, did you put a lot of that stuff on YouTube? Or just on the Facebooks mostly? Uh, most on Facebook and Instagram. Uh huh. Instagram, flying Fiddler. That's it, Flying Fiddler. That's right, he's an old time fiddler too, and I gotta go get Pete in the mandolin. So, there and uh, Flying Fiddler on YouTube as well. Okay, check him out. All right, let's go look at some airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's my humble little camp out here at Columbia. And uh, this is Mila's F-19. Say again the year. This is a pretty new one. A 70? This is a 76. 76. And then after the O-200, they went with a little bit bigger Lycoming engine? Uh, yeah. Like yeah. O-290s or something? I think so. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, the next one was the F-21. F-21, which featured a different engine. Okay, here's your typical uh, Luscom right here. Another beautiful example of one. I suspect this is an 8A. How do you tell which model of Luscom you're looking at? One of the ways is whether it's got a rear window back here or not. Stock cowling. And the stock 8A comes with a 65 horse Continental engine. Just beautiful. This is the 120 you brought? Yeah, this is my, my uh, Blue Light 120. Uh, it's got a C85 stock 85 horsepower engine. 1946, one of the earlier models uh, compared to Dustin's over there. What years is yours, Dustin? 1947. 47. That's right. There's that that big that big push of light aircraft uh, post-war boom in the 46, 47, 48, and then right away the the boom turned to bust or slowed way down. And so the general consensus is that. Uh, Cessna basically took the Luscom design and refined it. That's why we parked them next to each other here, so people can make up their mind. <laughs> yeah, make up your mind. Who, what came first? Well, the Luscom definitely came oh, first, and uh, all all metal, no wood, no glue, no nails. And then uh, Cessna came up with the 120 and then the 140 design after that. 
uh, and another beautiful white luscum right here. At the end of this flight line, we got some very special aircraft to show you, and we're patiently waiting for the arrival of another <laughs> very special aircraft. So we gotta roll with it here for a while. Here comes the 150 horse Lycoming. And this is Dustin's backcountry wagon here, the Cessna 120 with uh, with the big wheels. What size are those, Dustin? Those are the 850s. 850s, balloony looking 850s. That's all the more you really need around here. Four well, later STC. Yeah, what do you got going there? Uh, helped with your seat, engine cooling? More static RPM. The owner claims, so I, I believe him. Huh. Yeah, he can land that thing short. No flaps. Cessna 120. Piper Pacer lives here with the giant wheels. Another Piper Pacer. <clears throat> We're getting to the Luscombs, I promise. <laughs> here is uh, another one of those DCO 65 Taylor crafts, like uh, my first airplane. This one happens to be for sale for approximately. 10 times what I paid for mine back in 1978, but this is a beautiful restoration job. And she is available. I think this owner is moving out of state. DCO 65 Taylor Craft, also known as the L2. And this is the two seat tandem, tandem Taylor Craft. Most BC 12Ds are um, side by side, of course. All fabric covered, and one of the distinctive features of all the Taylorcraft designs was a semi-symmetrical airfoil. I think this is Lisa's. Yeah, this is Lisa's uh, Luscombe with a big engine. I'm not sure exactly which big engine she has in here. Look at that polish. You can tell that a big engine lost can buy the shape of the cowling is completely different. That's like a Piper cowling and nose bowl on this on this modified Luscom. Hey, here's a real special Luscom over here you got to see. Scott, we're going live. We're going live with the bad habit here. <laughs> yeah. Give us the short story in 500 words or less, Scott. Short story, 500 words or less. Yep. Uh, I owned this airplane 30 years ago, uh, sold it because of airline career downfall. And six months ago, my wife found it and bought it back to me. And how many owners were in between? Uh, seven owners, two of them twice. And uh, what's the general condition of the airplane since you owned it all those years ago? I'm, I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> Look at him, see? These Luscombs are a little bit addictive, folks. <laughs> it is exactly the way it was when I was Exactly the way. Wow. So it was well cared for and hangered. And, and this is, of course, distinctive paint job is what gives it away. And then, uh, Scott, where'd you go? Tell us the story about <laughs> how did you get outlawed from the uh, trophy judging of beautiful Luscombs here? Uh, the CLA always had a, an award ceremony every year. And when we brought it in the very first year we bought it, uh, two young kids, my wife was my first, uh, my girlfriend at the time, and we flew in. Uh, the people embraced the airplane. They had seen it and heard about it, but never actually had it here. Uh, it won People's Choice that year and Reserve Grand Champion. The very next year we won Grand Champion, and they told us the only reason we didn't win it the first year was because they wouldn't let some snot nosed kids bring an airplane in and win. <laughs> and uh, they banned it. And they actually have a clause in CLA that you can't ju be judged again five years, within five years of winning the awards. Uh, seven or eight years passed, we brought the airplane back. The judges determined that it was still eligible to be awarded again, and they gave it another Reserve Grand Champion Award, and they and said, that's it, you're done. <laughs> you're done, you can't keep winning with this airplane. And that was 30 years, well, it's 25 years ago now. Wow. And um, the airplane is still as you see it today. In beautiful uh, shape thing. and it's a just an 8a with a 65 continental yep. and uh, say again the year on it 1945 45 does, does that that didn't necessarily make it a, a considered a pre-war luscom the interesting thing is the pre-war airplanes they stopped building them for the war in 40 late 41 early 42 or somewhere in that time frame mm -hmm. uh, they packed up all the parts and in 45 when they started building again about 
October, November time frame, they pulled all the parts out that they had previously built. So, so they're pre-war parts. This is a pre-war fuselage, pre-war wing, uh, and there's a lot of ways you can tell that on the side of the fuselage. Uh, everything's pre-war on this particular airplane. Can you point out a couple of those features real quick, uh, the pre-war features? Pre-war features, which you can't see right now, but the wing ribs are different. They're handmade. Ah. Uh, Post-war ribs were stamped ribs. Pre-war ribs were hand-built up uh, T-section, very more delicate ribs. And the fuselage, if you look at the fuselage section down here. The, this this, this sheet strap, metal here. This sheet metal coming down here. Yeah. This strap on a pre-war airplane goes all the way from the door post all the way to the tail. And on the later aircraft, they split them right here. So you'll see a separation. Between ah, them. okay. Yeah. That's a sure. But, uh, and then is, wow, look at that. It's just austere. <laughs> Look at that it, austere interior. What do we got here? You got a mag switch, the all important needle and ball, an original Luscom tachometer that rolls backwards or counterclockwise, oil temp, oil pressure, airspeed, and altimeter. That's all you really need. And look at that, no, only, only rudder pedals, only controls on the left there. Yeah, so the right side's been pulled out so I can put stuff down there. Uh-huh. So the but, stick the stick comes out with a pin. Yeah. And then there's a cover so people don't get their feet and stuck in the rudder belt. There's a high speed flyby. That's the Renaissance one, right? Yeah. Hopefully he'll be back. What engine is in that Renaissance one? Do you remember? Uh, I believe he said it's a 180 horse or hopped up hopped up uh 0320 with a uh, three three bladed Cato prop. Wow. Yeah, we got to get the story on that one. Excellent. Thanks, Scott. The beautiful uh, bad habit. And but the other award winner now that allows Doug Johnson to come in here and win win all the awards, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, right, right. This looks beautiful now. Yeah. Look, look at that. So, like this. <laughs> so it's back after all these years. Bad habit. Here's uh Barry Perkins out of Monterey, California, with his uh. <laughs> Oh, painted up Luscom. He, he even put tape over here to so when he blasts his 50 caliber guns, they can blow through the tape and keep the gun cameras clean until he gets ready to pull the trigger. 8F. Here's a distinctive feature of the 8F. See that landing gear? It's thicker here and there's no struts over here. That's called the Silflex landing gear on the 8F model of Luscoms. Here comes another flyby. 150 horse Luscom. A couple of Taylor Crafts. These are the BC 12D Taylor Crafts. Everybody loves to come to the Luscom Flying because the Luscom Fan Club is such a cool group of folks. But generally, each type club has their own individual fly ins, but Here's a, they like to mix and match. Here's the uh, Piper Pacer that gets a lot of aerial photography work done. And one of the tricks to this, there's a Blanco Lirio fan now <laughs> tuning in. <laughs> Absolutely, good to see you. Where's Pete? <laughs> yeah, I gotta go get Pete, dang it. <laughs> well, here comes another flyby, watch this. I think this is the Renaissance aircraft. hear that three-bladed Cato prop sounds like something out of the Reno air races yeah sure sure we're live on the YouTube right now uh, we're live <laughs> All I ask you okay sure and here's a neat trick he's done on the uh, pacer here he's got a, a drawstring for the door so he can pull the door up and get um, clear aerial shots out of the side of the pacer for, see see how little i know how many times have i done that to you clipper guys called it a pacer when it's really a clipper please, please don't say the p word so close to <laughs> that's right my popping and peeing and p's and q's how do you know it's a clipper when you look at it, it no rear seat sticks and, no they're four plays it has sticks instead of wheels uh-huh it has full span ailerons no flaps okay it's about 200 pounds light. okay that's right now kathy with the clipper would have whopped me upside the head so see the sticks he's talking about in there and the full span ailerons here and no flaps so that makes that the piper clipper 200 pounds lighter than a pacer he says 
so my piper knowledge is <laughs> severely lacking that they're beautiful polished 8a i think this is kits we got here it is 150 horse Yeah, Kits has this distinctive uh, windshield on it right here. Um, Kit is a uh, fantastic uh, AI and instructor who is an expert on all the systems, carbs and mags and that sort of thing of these light aircraft. And he's been teaching at the local A&P school, which was the first thing I did after high school, was uh, went to A&P school and got my mechanics license so that I could work in the industry work on my own aircraft and this is a this is a really low time luscom he found very lightweight rag wing yeah. and again just a very austere interior all right up next is the Cessna 195 This is the Cessna business liner, the big, uh, normally Jacobs powered radial engine Cessna. This was the business aircraft of the day. And this was the aircraft, the Beechcraft. Beechcraft, of course, had the Staggerwing Beach biplane. And then they went, Beechcraft designed the Bonanza to compete with this. And the Bonanza design won favor over the Cessna 195. But look at that. Big, beautiful Jacobs radial engine. Let's see if we can figure out what size that is. Da, 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 da. 237, 2200 RPM. What is that? 755. 755 cubic inches? The Cessna 195. They had this came in two flavors the Cessna 190 and the Cessna 195. And it just had these little split flap well wait a minute yeah split wait a minute yeah split flaps that drop right out of here like that no lift but plenty of drag and some of the 190s even had crosswind landing gear this one does not here comes somebody now for a flyby Some more lust comes up here. Check over my shoulder, make sure the arrival that we're waiting for doesn't show up. Could be an 8E. It's got the rear window. It's got the patroller doors like the mighty Luscom. And beautiful interior. But more comfortable seats. Wow. That. Very nice. Here's another 8A. Oh yeah, we're getting up to the, a couple of very special Luscoms up here. Another beautiful Ragwing 8A. These aircraft today, you can buy them for, well, they vary all over on price. Maybe as low as 15,000 bucks for a, a flyable one that is kind of rough, all the way up to twenty-five, thirty-five thousand dollars for for a really nice one. Look at that polished aluminum. Wow. Here comes the Renaissance. Okay, one more. Shiny eight, model eight Luscom back there they're all camped out <laughs> and look at this here it is one of only two that I know of flying in the world today the ultra rare Luscom Phantom this was recently restored by Rick Atkins of Ragtime Arrow here in Placerville California and is owned and flown here locally 
and is only one of two flying in the world. I understand there's a couple of project airplanes out there. I know Kevin Eldridge is building one up. It's going to be a beautiful example of a Luscombe Phantom. That'll probably be the third flying Luscombe in the world. Now, I don't, I'm not an expert on Luscombe Phantom history, but I can tell you that the landing gear on this thing is a bear. It was extremely hard to restore and align and get it to cooperate. And even when they were brand new, they were a real problem. And that's why you don't see any Luscombe Phantoms flying anymore today because the few that were built were all ground looped. Radial engine, I'm not sure if that's a Warner or a Kenner. Let's see if I can, I can't quite read back there what I'm seeing. But look at that very distinctive cowling. Of course, fixed pitch prop. Fabric wing. But just a strange landing gear design. Look how it's it's notched into the wing strut, kind of like an afterthought. Warner, Warner radial engine, I think you're right. Monocoque fuselage. Yeah, uh, 30s vintage. So what aircraft does this remind you of? Does it remind you of a monocoupe? Well, that should because Don Luscombe, the idea guy behind this Phantom, initially worked for monocoupe aircraft. And you can see it's kind of a metalized version of a monocoupe was the concept. And this one does have split flaps right down along in here hot little airplane just beautifully restored two seats side by side with sticks just straight sticks and a baggage area a hat shelf with a baggage area in back look at all that sheet metal work and all the rivets around that just beautiful so we're expecting the other the only other flying phantom in the world to show up any minute now so hang tight for that we've had some uh, fog in the valley so guys are late getting out of the valley today the weather's just been perfect up here just beautifully restored is that hey what's going on Kit what photographing this for the YouTube channel yeah we're going live right now can you give us any more insight as to the phantom history here uh, it was a, a wreck when they got it yeah and uh, it took Rick Atkins a long time yeah <laughs> a long time to get her going but he's a master yep yep he sticks with it and I understand that the uh, tricky handling characteristic is solved on this airplane and Rick spent a lot of time getting that... getting the fit of those tu telescoping tubes just right yeah yeah he he was explaining that to me on this landing gear what Kit's talking about is inside of that landing gear fairing is two telescoping tubes like this and getting those two tubes lined up was just a bear and that's part of the trick to the alignment of these things. They didn't originally have those, fl those flying wires on it, but they suspected that the tricky handling was because the gear was kind of... The, so it was an afterthought, yeah, why it that, got notched right. into the... In fact, the, the designer, that was his, he left the firm, and his last idea was, why don't you guys try bracing that gear? And so that was the first thing that they did. What you could do with it, obviously, is put scissors on it, but nobody does that because it wouldn't look right. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be a phantom then. That's right. <laughs> You'll deal with that handling. And that's a, that's a, a real man can handle That's this right. Way. And that's a, a trick with these antiques is in order to be authentic, you got to go authentic, and that means whatever bad characteristics were designed into it. Crummy you got break, crummy brakes? you got to use, you gotta them, use them. Yeah, no upgrading. That's cheating, and you won't get the trophy. <laughs> well, it's good to see you, Walter. Yeah, you too. And this is another very, very rare machine that just recently got restored. That was Kit Sodegren, the, uh, the uh, A and P instructor. So this is a very rare, I don't know how many of these, or if this is the only one, Luscombe Model 4. So I think the lineage is 
Don Luscombe left Monocoupe, came up with this Phantom design, which was a expensive aircraft back in the day in the late 30s and then came up with a more simplified version of the Phantom which became the Luscombe Model 4 but it still had a radial engine and then he further simplified this design to the Model 8 an 8A which is so became so wildly popular and was much easier to build own and operate as a light aircraft for the masses but this is the Model 4 the predecessor to the Model 8 Maybe we'll get the owner here to tell us some more about it. Look at that. Again, like the Monocoupes and like the Phantom, it's just a big blind radial engine in front of you. Austere interior, two seats side by side with straight sticks, and flaps, and rudder pedals, and a little bit of baggage in the back there. Looks like uh, fuel in the wing, wing tanks. And there's a date on there. I can't quite read that date. I think it says 1930 something. But look at the Art Deco details. Wow. Look at this. All of these compound curves building these things made them really complicated to, to build. And they were really simplified in the Model 8 design. Wild landing gear fairing. Even the tail wheel is fared. But there's that there's that monocoque Luscombe style fuselage which is found on the Model 8s. And there's the radial engine. And I suspect that's a ground adjustable propeller. What engine are we looking at here in the Model 4? Warner Scarab Jr. Warner Warner Scarab Jr. 90 horse radial engine. Wow. Is this you? Yeah. It's unfortunately that's me. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to insult you. Look at that split cowl right there and there. Hey, hey, he, he has a son. Looks like a sop with camel cowling. <laughs> Man. <laughs> The Model 4. Charlie and I. That's what happens. The Rolsons are en route. They're en route. Okay, so we'll, we should see a Phantom here soon. They're coming up out of uh, YOLO. They and uh, So stay tuned. I'm going to keep rolling it here until the Phantom shows up. And we can see one of these Phantoms in the air flying. I think my battery should be okay on the phone here. Hey from the UK. So I think we'll work our way back down towards the uh, end of the field here. We might get the best view of the Phantom when he shows up. Here's a couple of the of more of the 8As. Thousands of these were built of the Model 8s. And of course if you've been following the channel this is the aircraft that is going to be going back into production again here real soon. And I think they've got the first four aircraft consigned for. Brand new construction of the Model 8. And they'll be using the O200 Continental engine on the new one. This one's just beautiful too. Look at this yellow one. 777-200ER. <laughs> No, this is real flying. I have not yet ordered a brand new Luscombe. Uh, they've got, it looks like they got the first four orders already um, covered. So hopefully they'll get the line back up and running. And let's see, Scott, I gotta, I gotta turn. There we go. Scott Monroe, if you're watching, just get up here. Get in that blank of that Viking and get on up here. <laughs> so we're going to work our way down the line here and see if we can get this Luscombe Phantom. 
Maybe I can answer some questions here if I can see in this daylight. Yeah, that key lime video was something else. It really, it it got, it must have got caught up in the YouTube uh, universe there. I think it went over 200,000 views and uh, uh, was real educational to a lot of people, I hope. Yeah, we got some champs down here today. We got some tea crafts. This looks like, oh, I think it's an E model. It's got the... Some Luscombs have square rudders, squared off rudders, and most of them are rounded off rudder, rudders. The boulders on short final at Columbia Airport. Yeah, there's plenty of runway down here, though, and the grass runway is just exquisite. Hey, I, <laughs> I learned something here today. Let me see if I can flip this around. Uh, playing on the grass runway this morning in the Husky with the big romper room tires. The braking action on a grass runway when it's wet is nil. <laughs> To really experience what nil braking action is, just stomp on the brakes on a grass, wet, grassy runway. I swear that airplane went even faster with the brakes on than it did with the brakes off. Because so with the wheels turning in the tall grass, it'll slow down better than just sliding across the uh, grass. And uh, <laughs> you could l literally land with the wheels locked up, and it, in the Husky, it'd take you like 400 feet of sliding before it would come to a stop on the <clears throat> on the wet grass so that was a real educational good educational experience to get out here on this grass and practice 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 those short field landings full stall landings and working with the brakes under minimal braking conditions it's in route the phantom's in route well it should only take them 15 minutes <laughs> How fast is that? Do those things fly? 140, 150? All right, he's got her slowed weight it back. Oh, okay. So we might. Oops, let me fix that camera again here. We might be waiting a bit. Let me flip that around. Flip that around. There, that's better. How many years have you been coming to this event? I see your face here every year for 30 years. Since 1978. 1978. I don't think you've missed one, have you? Except well, for the first? I've missed a couple because I couldn't get out of Sonoma County. Because of the fog. Yeah. Um, I sat there in the airplane all day long. <laughs> I couldn't get out. Oh, man. And how many Luscombs have you owned over those years? Just one? Just one. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Owned an Aronka. Yeah. Now the 182. Yeah. The 182 has made 15 trips to Oshkosh. It's planning its 16th this year. Excellent. Oshkosh is on. It's a go, and we're going, and we're going. you're going. And yep. uh, did you? What did you decide, Scott, to uh, just take the airlines over, or? It's, it's undecided. There might, Undec be, might be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Scott's got a Luscom problem. He's got an airplane problem here, and we're <laughs> trying to help him, but he's just got too many dang airplanes and projects, and he's getting close to retirement, and we're all debating what to do. I'm on the hunt. He's on the hunt, and it. <laughs> after a while, these airplanes <coughs> own you. <laughs> you don't own the airplanes, oh, and you, no. you can't decide what to do because he's got so many airplanes, and he's impacting his retirement plans. <laughs> yeah, great folks out here. Everybody loves to come to the Luscombe flying. Hey, there's Scott right now. All right, he's <laughs> he was watching. <laughs> Good. Yeah, you're. <laughs> Thanks, J6. Look who it is. It's our old friend, guest guest help helicopter, rotorhead Scott Monroe. You're live on. Uh, you're live. live you're live. live. Well, I got to. <laughs> I bought everybody breakfast today, so we got to earn our hey, breakfast go. money back. So what's up? <laughs> so did you bring the Viking up? Yeah, yeah, I got over there. Good, good. And uh, was it foggy down there in the valley? This ah, uh, a little bit of a layer. Yeah, I just got yeah. on top. No problem. It was breaking up, so I didn't have to file or anything. But yeah, no problem. So weird marine layer coming in. Yeah, it's yeah. very strong marine it's layer. Strange. They warned us about it last night. Pushed or... in from the coast. It's... It happens once in a while, but not very often. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're what do they call it in the video industry, in the news industry, when you when you're rolling, when you're waiting for something to happen, and you gotta <laughs> and you gotta talk and I don't know what you gotta on. kill time in front of the camera. What's oh, the stretch they do this stuff? They do. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Keep Give going, me that. Keep going. <laughs> I didn't have anybody in front of me when I was on the, on the camera. They'd be just like, keep yeah. going, keep going. Keep going. So what we're waiting for today, is Scott, is the uh, 
the only other flyable phantom is en route right. from uh, okay. Yolo County. So there's only two. Right, and, and one of them's here. here. Yeah, the Rick so Atkins one's here. So you texted me this morning. I'm going, Phantom, F4s? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, no, no, no. No, you yeah. idiot. Phantom, let's <laughs> Yeah, they're not going to land on this grass oh, strip. Man, I must be getting old. <laughs> we all are. That's, right. That's the topic of conversation around here these days. <laughs> all of our Crazy. health topics. So Stretch. All right. Yeah, so I was going to... Well, I was going to hope to catch him down here, but... Um, Let's go look, man. There's a beautiful Piper Apache down there. You don't see many of those. Oh, really? I, that showed gorgeous. up since we were gone, huh? Yeah. We'll get down here on the approach end of the runway. I hope this camera battery holds out for the... <laughs> I'd hate to break up this live... Extra memory card. Feed into... Batteries. Well, we're going live, so hopefully I'm not using any memory card, but... Uh, well, you're going to be one of those guys with the big pack, backpack no, and the satellite dish on your helmet? I'm sticking to the to the uh lightweight setup a cell phone and a gopro and and uh <laughs> it's still like a terrible audio here's another this t craft just showed up yeah. yeah he was uh just about cut me off there <laughs> <laughs> actually it wasn't his fault it was this cessna turning the base over lake tahoe oh boy yeah a million miles away yep. That looks like a pre-war T-Craft. Uh, it's a deluxe the... model. They've got yeah, the, trim, the trim, which these are really hard to find. Yeah. Super hard to find. Um, fiberglass pants, which is, mm. yeah, you know. Yeah, nice one. That's, yeah. and that, no, uh, I don't know if it's pre-war or not. I can't, it's possible it's a 40 or whatever. What about engine stuff? Uh, he's got the trim around the windows. Yeah. Audio's not bad today. Good. Well, as long as the wind stays down. So we've been out romping around in the dirt a little bit in the Husky. We made it over to Dead Cow Playa yesterday. Big, big goings on over there. Yeah. Stay tuned for that. Yeah, look at this here. You got to yeah. have no time to even wash it. Yeah, that's right. Like you said, this thing's going to show up all thrashed and tomorrow out. Well, I'm getting it's like there. those trucks, you know, people spend yeah. 50 grand on their trucks and then they scratch the hell out of the sides because they're boonie crashes. Yeah, that's right. Why even paint it? Just leave it silver. Yeah, just because you're going to patch it up anyways. Uh, what do we got here? Glass Star? Yeah. So this is a kit built airplane that uh, makes a pretty good backcountry airplane and a clean, um, aerodynamically clean and fast cross country machine as well. Yeah. So. Short field performance. Well, I see them up in Idaho all the time. Yeah, yeah. Probably a lot of power for a small airframe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So did you spend the night? Yeah, yep, oh, yep. Okay. Good good camp out here last yeah, night. Man, you got more energy than uh, you know me. You go to the playa <laughs> and pick up your... Pick up well, Pete? I took a nap. I had okay, to take a nap, well, and then well, Pete was I down... Do that with, anyway. Yeah. I do that even when I don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Pete was down with an allergy. I might have to go up and get him. And here goes that Swift with the 0300 engine. That's the stock engine in the Swift. A lot of those are modified with the 180 or slide combing. And 200, ooh, an yeah, IO. Yeah. yeah. I had uh -huh. one of those for about two years with the 300. Good yeah. Fine. You had a Swift? Yeah, yeah, for a little while. About a, about a year and a half, almost two years. That was the champ, and there's Doug's uh, award winning Buscom. So, besides bad habit, uh, Doug's C90 is the one that keeps winning. And it's it, it started out needing a lot of work, and he's poured a lot of effort into it. Skins on that fuselage. Yeah. Those aren't the factory skins, are they? I don't know. We'll have to ask well, that Doug. Would be something. Yeah, if he got it restored that polished that well. Huh. Well, shoot, where's this Phantom? We're all anxiously awaiting the arrival of the Phantom. So there's only two. Two right? flying that I've heard of, yeah. Yep. What are these? Is a Warner for a power plant? Uh, Warner Scarab, I believe, is correct. Yeah. Wow, look at this. This thing is gorgeous. Wow, you don't, don't see, see many of the little yeah. potatoes. You know? Yeah, you don't see yeah. people pouring a lot of money in an old Apache. Yeah. Apache, right? Apache. So is the Apache the forerunner to the Aztec, right? Yeah. yeah. So it was Piper's. And the Seneca, it's their first twin. Twin. Two 150 horse Lycomings, 0320s, later to 160 horse. So, you know, super economical to run. They're not mm -hmm. very fast. Mm hmm. But they, because they weren't that practical for transportation, you know, they. Um, rapidly become a good multi-engine trainer. Multi-engine, affordable multi-engine tra trainer. Just, they were, you know, back back tie down, rotting away forever. But this one's just gorgeous. He even kept the old G uh, gyros in there. <laughs> Check it out. Oh yeah, look isn't at that. that. Isn't that nice? Wow. Amazing. Yeah, this could go to Oshkosh and maybe, you know, win some awards. It's that clean. Wow. Just newer avionics and that's about it. It needs a good GPS, but boy, what a nice plane. Boy, did he cherry this one out. He's as old as we are. Yeah. As as yeah. Love the color, too. 
Yeah. yeah. That 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 particular color of green. Huh. Very popular 50s color. Now, what do you think cars. the uh, single engine service ceiling is on one of these? <laughs> yeah, I th I don't know if it has one. <laughs> It's, it's just, very possible it's only a couple thousand feet. You know? Yeah. I'm not sure. I've never flown one. Especially with the 150 horse, that'd yeah. be something. Huh. A they big old fat Hershey bar wing with a, with, a, with a wing. And they only had, the original one only had one hydraulic pump on, uh, on the on uh, one engine. vertical engine. Uh huh. So, uh, yeah, not much. So, if you lost that, you had to hand pump the gear up. When you lost the critical engine, you'd be hand pumping the gear up. While you're trying to feather it, and <laughs> oh boy, that'd be a good trainer. <laughs> Holy smokes, man! Sure is nice. Wow. Brand new, all brand new. Brand new engines and parts of props. Yeah, no, Sky King was uh, the Cessna T10, uh, correct? Fifties. Vintage. Yeah, you had the Cessna uh, bamboo bomber. Bob, before that the very first. Yeah, it was the Bobcat had, or T50 or. T50, right? Yep. The bamboo. They call it a bamboo bomber because it had uh, wooden wings. Yeah. Which you can still fly one over at uh, Lincoln. They got one for sale, or not for sale, but for rent. Oh, that's right. Yeah, wing. Andy Bibber's got a uh, bamboo Bibber. bomber you can rent. Want to fly an old classic plane? Yeah. In the Army for... And there goes the 150 horse Luscombe. Oh, that's the same guy we had on our last... Uh, yeah, that's right, the last video, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we met Gavin. That's the 150 horse nice Luscombe. Airplane. That is yeah, I think he lives right over here, Pine Mountain Lake, not too far away. Like, what do we got here? A Piper uh, Cruiser? What's the oldest plane on the field? Mm, probably one of those early model 30s vintage Luscombs. Yeah. The Model 4 or probably the Phantom. It's probably the Phantom yeah. is the oldest like and that. rarest yeah. machine out here. After that, it might be the Taylor Craft if it's a 40 or a pre war. Pre war key card? Yeah. yeah. Craft. Yeah. yeah. So we're still rolling the footage here, stretching it, hopefully, hopefully getting a, a Luscombe Phantom on the set here soon. So bear with us here. He hits his mark. Yeah, it, it does look like an Aztec, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, a little small spot in the fuselage. When that, Lus when that Luscombe Phantom does show up, we'll be able to hear it. Mm -hmm. Way distinctively different than the, uh, than the um, rest of the Luscombs with that radial engine. Here's something else we can go take a look at while we're stalling for time after we check out this cruiser. This old, uh, Coop, Coop, what, no. what's that? What, 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 what? What's that? Sounds like a round engine. That sounds like a twin engine. It's probably old uh, Jimmy Dixon from uh, Cameron Park in the Twin Beach. Oh, yeah, sure enough, it is. All right. Hopefully, well, he'll bring it on over here. Let's go position for that. That's a fun one to watch. You, think he'll, you think he'll bring it? It looks like he's setting up for 1.7. Uh, one seven. Seven right yeah. Yeah, we'll be too far away for that. What do we got? No, I'm not running all the way out there. <laughs> we got the Super Cruiser here? Yeah. All right. And what engine you got in your Super Cruiser? 150. 150. Nice. Yeah. So the thing about a Super Cruiser was that it was a three-place airplane. Yeah, I know. Two, two in the back and one in the front with sticks. Piper Super Cruiser. So there's a Super Cub and then the Super Cruiser. And what... PA number is this one? A PA 12. 12. There was 12s and 14s and of course the 18 is the uh, Super Cub. Look at that. Looks like he's got access or maybe some baggage back there. Yeah, three place if you're friendly, that's for sure. <laughs> All these are to look at that super look at the teddy bear, the, the Piper Cub bears <laughs> all buffed out. And wing tanks, great short field airplanes. Okay, let's take a quick uh, let's take a quick walk over here while we're stalling for time. Still waiting for that Luscombe Phantom. What do we got here? Saturday, yeah, sure. From the Mid Wales, UK. Hey, are you guys over there in the UK? Are you guys able to get out? Are the pubs open uh, over in the UK? Because I got a bid for June, and I bid for London with the hopes that I can get out of the dang hotel room. Good, good news.
Yeah, good for kids in the back of that PA. So you guys recognize this airplane up here? No pubs will be on the 17th. The 17th of this month, May, I hope. <laughs> so this one's on static display. You guys recognize this aircraft? This is the uh, Grumman S2 Tracker. Here, there's the Beach 18. There he is. Yeah, that's Jimmy Dixon. Remember we did that video flying? Did you see that video? We got to go fly in that thing. Cool. Yeah. And did you get to fly it some? I was back in the back filming, oh, and uh, the, the broker was in front hogging the that would have been fun right to front get some seat. Time on the controls. I he I've got an invitation. I should yeah buy him some gas and right man you and got the go old, jump uh, on that thing. Delirio yeah, yeah, yeah. Press yeah. pass. Yeah. <laughs> Press, press, pull. <laughs> Didn't I sent you that? Yeah. If anybody's familiar with the, yeah, the Three Stooges, Stooges yeah. We, well, I sent you which that. Which we all when grew up on. This whole thing. This is you. Yeah. <laughs> You're number three here. Yeah. Oh. Press, press, and pull. You have to watch the Three Stooges to understand. <laughs> what a cool plane. Yeah. Now, what's up with the spar and these things? Obviously, they've got some of it handled, but this was the death death it, knell of this airplane. It for did. Some time. And he's got the spar mod done to it, and it was a ex very expensive deal. and they didn't proceed with the restoration of this aircraft until, until no it passed the spar inspection which i believe was an x-ray inspection and then they well and then they went ahead with the, yeah, rest, with of the, the rest restoration of it, that's the heart of the airplane now yeah oh yeah let's just so go two r985s yes wait a minute is that yeah that's gotta be wow gorgeous with the yeah. oh look at the end number he's got the bird on the side Man, what a beautiful Wait, one. this is a different one. Yeah, God, oh, this is that. a different one. Wow. That is beautiful. <laughs> this is not Dixon's Beach 18. Well, I'm glad there's a lot of money floating around the economy somewhere because these airplanes are still <laughs> yeah. getting saved. Getting saved, so yeah. Cool. I got to fix that camera. Let me see. There we go. All right. Oh, yeah, we're here at Columbia, California, near Sonora, California at the uh, casual gathering of Luscombs this year. It looks just the same as the formal. I know, it does. Look how many, how many Lusk, how many aircraft do you think are here? 40, 30 or 40 aircraft or more? Yeah, when you pull up in a Twin Beach or something like this, you're living like a rock star, man. Here come, look at, look at everybody just come running to see it, man. <laughs> so fabric ailerons, flaps, elevators, rudders. Yeah. <laughs> That kid's got to go TT. <laughs> Doesn't he have a, a loo in the yeah, back? Yeah, he probably there? does. Yeah. Corporate interior. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Hey, is that Ty? Jimmy Ferrer. Jimmy, what are you doing in this thing? You're supposed to be working. Now don't say... Don't swear live on live TV here now, Jimmy. You watch your mouth. <laughs> Jimmy Ferreira is a uh, Cal Fire tanker pilot. is his day job. And uh, that's where we're just going to go over and check out. That's what he flies is the turbine version of that uh, S2 over there. Where'd you come in from? Vacaville. Nut tree. Nut tree? All right. Look at this. Man. I want to see some good air-to-air -air footage. They're one of the best stunt pilots ever made. Flying one of these, it's a mad, 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 mad world. Yeah, we kind of covered that in that uh, uh, yeah, in that video. Hangar, yeah, this real billboard, and this was all done for real. For real, no CGI. That's right, Frank Tallman, uh -huh. and uh, I, I understand that the the billboard choked off one of the yeah. air inlets it, it cracked to the his windscreen caved the nose in uh, uh we miscalculated the thickness of, i just heard it was balsa wood yeah and, uh, intake adjusted one he lost one lost he one engine guy. <laughs> this hangar the hangar he flew through is still standing at the santa rosa airport you can drive right past it ah, there it is there's the hang <laughs> that they literally <laughs> flew through yeah pretty neat oh, that's a beautiful one. Man. He's probably got some 19-year-old flunky like you were polishing the thing for him, right? So <laughs> That's right. You got to get some kids like us. We used to be kids to polish that. 985s, 450 horse each. They produce thousands of these things. What did we say on that last video? 9,000 of these were produced. They were the workhorse for years and years. 
and uh, bomber trainer, all kinds of weird configuration, nav trainers, bomber trainers, uh, fire bombers, of course, cargo hauling, sprayers. Bomber, bomber nose in the front of the Norton up front to train the bomber. That's right, they had a real Norton bomb site in the front. So, what was the military designation? Was it 1810? C40, let's see, C45, C47, C47 was the so C-45, right? Wasn't this the C-45? Yes, maybe. C-54 was the DC-4. Yeah. The ice boots. Yeah, this one's set up, man. This one's set up executive style. And there's the spar mod that we were talking about. All right, here and all through here. And look at that. It's all, is that? Screws. Screws. Yeah, and then here's some of the covering of the, of the, uh, now this was a truss, a steel tube truss. Yep, right? it's a it's a welded truss and spar, the and the years of cargo flying, they finally an abuse. They finally started cracking, and so they had to modify them with this spar strap, and then they got a periodically X-ray inspection every Still, so many thousand hours. Yes, oh yep. And that's why you don't see too many of these flying today, because the the cost of ownership. There goes the uh, OV-10. Do I got him? Yeah, oh, there he is. That's the uh, Cal Fire spotter plane. Why don't you uh, just retire from the airlines and fly you one of them, man? That's been your fantasy plane for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You always to fly fires. <laughs> yeah. You should do that. Well, yeah. But your summers are shot with yes. that job. You are strapped to that YouTube tanker base. You could gold you could put out there. Well, I don't know if Cal Fire would go for that after, after too many shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> Too many missed radio calls. Yeah. That house went up. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't fly. Yeah. Look at the puppies that are showing up today. They said that it might uh, it might rain later on. So we're still waiting for the Luscom Phantom to show up any minute now, folks. <laughs> we're hoping to get this thing rolling. Huey spool. Yep. Cal Fire Huey boat. Super dry summer. They're going to be busy this summer. Yeah. So we've been at it for quite a while. Should I break this live feed off and wait and, and uh, start another one when the Phantom shows up? Or should we just keep rolling here? Let's see if Scott, uh, if Brian's got an update. Hey, Scott, have you heard an update yet on the... Jimmy's bringing the Phantom and they're on their way. But we don't know. They said that the place was socked in, so they just got this out. I imagine we just beat them here. Uh huh. So, Should be. Where are they coming from? Yolo. Yolo, and this came out of Nut Tree. Yeah. Well, let's just stay with this for a while here and see what uh, and see what happens. I can't even look inside. I'm trying to keep my wife from looking closer at the airplane right now. <laughs> Yeah, oh, she wants you to get one of these, huh? So sell it one night. She always wanted the Lockheed Electra. Uh huh. The story is when I bought the Cessna 195, I brought that home. We had it a week, and we were bombing around. Went for the Luscombe to the uh, the 195, and uh, we bought that because our friends had them. And then we were bombing around with uh, Ken Sandy Blankenberg, who had the Lockheed Electra. Yeah. And Shelly said, uh, "This is nice, but I really want that." <laughs> and we never went to the Lockheed or the Twin Beach. <laughs> it's a, it's an expensive proposition. You can't find a hanger for them. Yeah, that's, that's another good. problem. Yeah, where do you put put them? Now my back's too sore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to push them around. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty neat. So if you're just joining us, we're here at the Columbia Casual Gathering of Luscombs here at uh, Columbia, California, near Sonora, California. We got. I don't know, an estimated 30 or 40 aircraft lined up here on the grass runway today. Beautiful Saturday afternoon in Northern California. Perfect weather. And we're waiting for the arrival of the Luscombe Phantom aircraft. Uh, to see what one of those things looks like and performs like flying and especially on landing. Let's we'll see if we can get them going here. Let's fix that camera again. Boom, there we go. Wow. Yeah, here comes the here comes the people on down here. All right, let's go take a look at this uh, S2 while we're waiting here. 
And uh, as folks gather down here at the end of the runway, hopefully that means that Luskin's coming in soon. That Phantom. Not just any old Luskin. So these are the S2 trackers that CAL FIRE is using for our mainstay uh, medium-sized firebombing aircraft. 800 to 1,000 gallons of retardant. Nowadays it can go up to 1,000 gallons because this was the original configuration of the S2 tracker with the radial engines, the right... Uh, Scott, what were these? 1820s? Ooh, boy, the same as in the T-28, cackling away right radial engines. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, Double row, radial, right? Is it uh, I think only single row, right? Yeah. Okay. Single row of nine cylinders. And so, maybe you guys can read that up there. I should say eight. 1820. Anyways, these were all converted over to uh, turbine, turbine, air, turboprop, turbine conversion making it a much safer airplane. These poor old radial engines got hammered so hard uh, here by Cal Fire that the time between overhauls was down to about 400 hours. And they just couldn't keep these things airworthy. The engines operating reliably enough. So they had to go to the turbine engine conversion. And I, I mean, they had so many spares for the military and, and barrels, you know. The, the aircraft. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they eventually ran through the through the engine inventory. Yeah. Cod aircraft, yep. Carrier on board delivery. So the Hawkeye came along. I think so. Was that E3 or something? Yeah. And of course, it had fold, foldable wings for carrier operations, but uh, Cal Fire never folded them up. They probably just had all that removed for weight savings. They have, they have spoilers on top as well. Teeny little ailerons. Big flat, little teeny ailerons. They have spoilers for. Uh, I don't know about that. I think just the little teeny That's ailerons. The aileron. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Oh, yeah. wait a minute. No, look on top of the wing then. There's okay. Spoilers. All right. I think it's a combination. We gotta get Jimmy Ferreira to answer that. Good. Okay, I think we'll break off this live feed from here for now and then uh, we'll come back to you with a second live feed when we get word of these of these ultra rare Luscom Phantom and I think a monocoupe is coming as well. Ooh. Yeah, so some real oh, rare airplanes coming up. So, so hang around, stay tuned. We're going to knock this one off here now, and we'll come back as soon as we get word. See you here. Where's the off button, Scott? <laughs> I don't know how to work this thing. Uh-oh, 11, 15%. Yeah. Battery power low. <laughs>